Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at a MySQL setting that affects how inserts are allowed to run when the insert is trying to insert into a table with not null values. So we're going to look at another useful setting option to know about. And in this course, we're, we're probably going to see at least one more uh, very useful MySQL specific setting that you should know about. So there's this um, setting called uh, SQL mode. And uh, settings in MySQL in general can have global and local values. So let's take a look at, at what that actually means. Um, to start with, I'm going to say select. And this, this following syntax is very, very specific to MySQL. So it's, it's not a general SQL thing, but I'm going to type two kind of um, uh, at signs and let's put in here global dot sql underscore mode so if we take a look at the value of this we see it's set to strict all tables so if you want to read about what this actually does and i will explain um in just a moment <clears throat> excuse me then we can search uh, let's say in google for my sql sql underscore mode and in the first document that's linked to here, you get the MySQL documentation page. And there you can see various ways of setting the SQL mode. And you can see the most important SQL modes um, and just general various things you can set it to. You can also see how to set it, how to set this value in your configuration file to set it sort of permanently. So we'll take a look at what this actually does in a minute and we'll see that it can affect how our queries run. But I also want to mention that there is also a session SQL mode. So let's take a look at that. And I appreciate that this is going to be a bit cryptic at the moment, but all will become hopefully clear shortly. So let's say two at signs and a session dot SQL mode. So we can run this select statement with multiple values as long as they're separated by commas. And if we run this, we find that my global and SQL, um, uh, global and session SQL modes are actually set to different values. And that's just because I've been playing around with it a bit. So when I, when I installed my SQL, the default for both of them was no engine substitution. Uh, now the the global version of, of any setting in general that's that's going to set the value for any connection that's made to the server so if someone else connected to the server or you you ran an app that also connected to the server in addition to this mysql workbench if you set the global mode that's going to affect these other connections as well whereas if you set the session mode that's only going to affect this particular session in other words, it's going to affect this connection that you've made now. And if you drop the connection in the workbench and start it again, then the session SQL mode is going to default back to the global SQL mode. So there are sessions here, but there are also global values that you can set for any connection that's made to your server. If you restart the server, you're going to lose both of these and they're going to default either to the default values or to whatever you set in the config file. So if you want to set a variable like one of these permanently, you need to set that in the config file. So this will be SQL mode equals such and such. So what actually are these values? Uh, so the session SQL mode is the one that's it's actually going to affect this session. And I've got it set to no engine substitution, which was the default when I ran my SQL. Now, according to the documentation, what this value actually does, no engine substitution, is that if you specify when you create a table, if you specify an engine, as we saw in the last tutorial, but you misspell the engine or something, or you specify an engine that's not available, then um, if this variable is not set, MySQL is going to just substitute uh, some available engine, whatever the default engine is set to, for that misspelled unavailable engine. If this is, if this is set, it's not going to do that. So if you specify an engine that doesn't exist, then um, it's not going to substitute it with some default value. So if we do, for example, create, let's um, get rid of this and say create table 
test one id int engine equals some gobbledygook if no engine substitution is set then it's not going to execute that query now the one uh, what we're really interested in here is setting a mode called uh, strict or tables and let, let's see what effect that actually has so if I um, I've got let's let's go to use tutorial one I'm already using this database but I just want to show you from the beginning in case in case it's confusing without so we're going to say use the tutorial one database I'm going to say show tables these are commands that I do use a lot and we see we've got this users table in here I don't actually need this test table so I'm just going to do drop uh, table test while I think about it and now if we do show tables the test table will have disappeared and we've just got users let's do desk users and we can see that we created this table so that both of the fields can't be null now um, with the default setting at least the default setting I got when I installed my SQL out of the box and th this is something that you, you should try for yourself. If we do insert into users, insert into our table, we only specify one column in there. So we, we don't specify all of the columns that are not null. And then we say values, uh, let's specify for this just nine or something. And we run this and we look at the query. It has actually run, but with a warning and so if we do select star from users, we see that we've inserted that row and MySQL has inserted a default value for username, which for a string type, a text type, is an empty blank string. So it's, it's not null, but MySQL has made up a value for it, which is the default value. Now that may be the behavior you want. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna just carry on like that. I'm gonna stick with this option because I wanna try to use the settings that you most likely got out of the box. And this is how my version of MySQL came to me when I just installed it this time around. But sometimes you might wanna change that. You might wanna say, okay, if I've got not null values in my table, values that can't be null, if someone tries to do an insert on that table and they don't specify a value for the not null columns, for all of the not null columns, then um, the, the, the query should fail. You might want to say that rather than let MySQL make up a default value for it. And if you want to do that, you can change the SQL mode. So we could do, for example, set, let's say global set. Well, let's session is maybe the most useful. Let's say set session SQL mode equals, and we could set it to um, some value in here and you can see the most important values in the MySQL document but uh, a, an easy way to do this which sets both the local and global values of a setting at the same time in this case the SQL mode setting is just to say set SQL underscore mode equals and I'm going to set this to let's set it to strict all tables well, I'm using single quotes here, but in SQL it doesn't matter. So that I could just use double quotes and it should be fine. Let's run this. And we see that the query, uh, not, a, not so much a query, but the statement ran successfully. And now let's do select. In fact, I'll just um, bring up this query that I used previously. So we'll look at the global and session values of this SQL mode variable. And we see they've both been set to strict or strict or tables. If I now try to insert into a table and I don't specify a value for one or more of the columns that are not allowed to be null, let's try this with the value 10 for ID and I, I won't give a value for username, which is not null. Let's run this. Now we see that it gives an error. And although errors don't seem like a good thing, sometimes that's what you want. If you have a program that's executing SQL statements. Uh, it can be really bad if they run silently but they and they appear to succeed, but they don't actually do what you want. So if you run a SQL statement in your program, it's good practice to check somehow that that hasn't um, run and created an error. And the same applies 
kind of if you run um, uh, a SQL statement by hand like we're doing here, sometimes it can fail silently. You think it's worked, but it hasn't actually done what you want. So sometimes you want to make sure that queries fail when um, you do something that you don't really want them to do. And by setting this SQL mode variable, we've made sure that we have to specify values for all the fields that are specified as not null in our table. So um, it's, it's worth having a go at this yourself. Take a look at your global and local session modes like this, see what they're set to. They should be set to the default, to the, both to the same thing. You know, unless you change one of them, they should be set to both the same thing. And uh, you, um, you might want to try changing the SQL mode, as I just did. So that's this one, to strict or tables. And then try to insert into a table, as I just did, not specifying a value for a, a not nor column and check that it, it does fail if you set strict or tables. But I'm going to set this back to no engine substitution for the purpose of this, purposes of this tutorial. Although really, if I was running some sort of production database that actually really mattered, I, I probably would like to turn strict or tables on just to give me a bit of extra uh, sort of error checking. And also, if you just um, stop your server and restart it, then you'll get whatever default values are specified in your configuration file. Um, a couple of little things that I just want to mention. One thing is that if you didn't find a configuration file in your MySQL uh, directory, install directory at all, I should have mentioned this in the last tutorial really, you can just Google for a, like a default one on the internet and just copy that or even just write it out yourself, just Google for what should be in a typical MySQL configuration file. Uh, remember, you have to put it in the right location if you actually want to use it, and you have to restart your server. But um, my download of MySQL did include a dummy uh, sort of default um, configuration file, my.cnf, or it could be my.ini on Windows. It's just that it wasn't in the right place. And also, with queries in general, because I use different databases from time to time, even though I've been using MySQL for a very long time, I can still get confused because SQL syntax does vary between different databases. Uh, and also if you don't if you don't use a particular database for a few months, things can start to get confused in your mind and you forget the exact database specific syntax for SQL queries. So one good place to look is certainly the um, MySQL documentation, but often this is sort of a little bit cryptic and often it's easier just to do something like MySQL select query query example. So if you forget, for example, how to do a select query, then um, you can pretty easily find just examples of what that actually looks like, like concrete examples and that's sometimes better than looking at the documentation. Okay, we'll leave it there for this tutorial. Do have a go at setting strict all tables and see what effect that has for you on your system and check what mode you're currently using as well. So until next time, happy coding.